Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. So as part of the ICA's initiative to have events that work for a bigger and broader clarinet community, we're pleased to invite three adult enthusiasts uh, who have been playing for various lengths of time. And I'm so pleased to introduce my wonderful colleague, Jose Frank Ballester, who's an incredible teacher, performer, and really nice guy. So uh, great to have him here. Um, we've asked our three masterclass people to pre-record their music just so we know we have good sound for the start and then they're going to be working with Jose live. So I'm going to um, Marge, if we're going to introduce Marge Delaney and I'm going to put her music and recording on and then Jose is going to take it away and uh, work with her. So let me um, show everybody the music. Marge sent in an audio recording and I will just hit play and uh, Jose, if at any time you want me to stop, just let me know. Sure. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you. I've learned a lot today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so so happy to meet you, Marge. Where are you coming from? Um, well, we are we live in Austin, Texas, but we're in mm -hmm. New Jersey right now. New Jersey, yes. yes. Excellent, beautiful, beautiful, and um, you know, I I'm so happy and I'm so glad to be here with all of you and and sharing our love for music and for the clarinet together and this. This is the, the best thing we can do, right? And so uh, what I'm gonna try to do today with not only you, but, but with everybody is to provide you with tools of how you can approach this music and clarinet playing in a different way. Okay. Uh, so if, if, if we go to the very top of the, of the, of the piece, and uh, Michelle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share the screen right now okay so uh share screen share all right you see the score over here right yes all right perfect so one of the things i i really like doing before i start playing or practicing every piece i i'm gonna draw something i do stuff like this i click here and i'm doing like and then the phrase is gonna end over there and then the next one and then another one is gonna end over here 
ラロレリリラロロロラリラロラリレレロリラロ。So, and then something is gonna do end here. So, as being creative, now we need to kind of figure out what is happening with all these notes here. Because one of the things we want to do is to avoid all those notes sounding flat. And one of the first things I, I will do when I'm practicing at home will be to sing it. And March, try to imagine the most beautiful sound. Try to imagine that sound that you have here in your heart, that sound that made you want to learn clarinet the first time and and sing first and then try to play and try to imitate what you are doing when you are singing because that's going to help you a lot okay. then as you do those things i will add breath signs on your score to have a, a clear pattern of where you want to breathe so you have a little bit more of that information I'm not gonna make you sing right now, but I I I want you to uh, for 10 seconds look at the music and imagine you're singing. Okay. Okay. There is something I love. I love going to choir rehearsals. And this year I was able to perform a piece with a with a choir at, at UBC and just watching the conductor work with the choir it was incredible because when you know that singers they are always singing la da 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 bum bum la da 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 and they're warming up right it, the conductor had those students move and conduct as they were warming up so every student was doing they were acting, they were moving their, their body. Their, their body was free when they were doing this. So when you practice this, I don't want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine move along with the music and enjoy that music. I'm just trying to give you a little bit more of freedom of how you're doing things. If your attitude is being protected because you're afraid of having mistakes, it's not going to be so good for you. Don't worry about mistakes. Worry about enjoying what you like the most, which is music. So, I open the phrase, I close the phrase. Okay, so that's one of the things I want you to to know. This is like a little bit more general, but that's something I do all the time. Before I play every note, I need to visualize all the gestures and all the phrases. Okay. Uh, the second thing I like doing, March, is by working with my breath as I'm playing. My breath is not only doing this my i call it a musical breath my breath is doing like like kind of warmer you wanna of course you wanna have a beautiful center on the sound but you wanna make that breath musical as you go that we can practice now together can we do it together just put your hand here and try to Sing, like make your, your breath be musical, not just like whoosh, like this. Okay, let's do it. One, two, and. That's good. Okay, now we're gonna do another thing. As you're doing this, I want you to pay attention here. And I want you to move and to relax your body. And then you're gonna be doing like, Ooh. 
imagine we are doing yoga or doing something and we wanna feel this. Okay, let's try that. One, two, and. Yes, yes, that's so important. That kind of freedom because when our muscles, they get tight, our sound is gonna get tight as well, okay? And now let's play the first phrase. Okay. Don't, uh, March, don't worry about sound. Don't worry about notes. Worry about those things I'm telling you, okay? Okay. Beautiful, you see? I saw now you were opening the phrase and closing the, the, the phrase. And I love your beautiful vibrato that you're doing. Sing more like the way you're doing. Okay? The, uh, let's do it once more. Okay. And now let's play a tiny bit softer. And imagine you, you are singing that with the most beautiful voice ever. Very good. Okay, now I want you to pay attention to turn two notes. The first note is going to be the A natural. Yes. And the second note is going to be the B natural. Those two notes, they are not sounding as good as the other notes. They they kind they kind of kind of coming out too much. avoid doing that. So can you play for me E to A? And the way you said yes, March, is like someone has been telling you that already and you know about that. So <laughs> let's let's do something else. When you do E to A, let's relax your body and do it. Beautiful. I love that one. That, and, and now the color is more similar. Okay. And now let's do the next two. It's A natural to B natural. And relax the body. Just pay attention to the breath. connection is much better right away and now let's do the phrase again the entire thing and now let's pay attention to those notes a and b march that was great i love that that was beautiful. You see, it's just like pointing out at those uh, beautiful things. Uh, it is so important with, with uh, uh, every single student, right? It doesn't matter how much, how many years you have been learning clarinet, that our approach from the very beginning, it's a breath approach and our body is kind of disconnected from that breath and relaxed. Because when we try to play like this, we also sound like that. And sometimes, even myself, I have to recognize this. When I'm nervous with a concert, sometimes that happens to me. And, and then I have to tell myself, Jose, come on, relax, just relax. And I'm just letting my, my, my body relax. So this is just practicing with a philosophy of, of like knowing what we are doing with our air and knowing how we are relaxing our body. Okay, I think we got the first one, uh, and it's very beautiful. Can we do the next one? Yeah. And I would like you to 
uh, visualize that phrase. Imagine you're singing. I love that A natural. That A natural is like you sustain that A natural. It has a different depth. A lot of people, they want to do a diminuendo on that A natural and it sounds. Has a little bit more tension that that a natural, okay. And now we're gonna do the same as before. Let's have our musical air. Let's do it together. One, two, three. Good. March. Move more. Move more. We're gonna lose up. All right. One, two, three. That's it. When that A comes, I always picture that singer like and they do that with their hands. It's this kind of image, right? So it is so important for us to be creative and have a mental image of what we want, okay? Because the truth is that everybody can phrase. Even if they're amateur clarinet players, even they're nine years old clarinet players starting to play the clarinet from the very beginning, or even if they are advanced students, everybody can phrase. We just need to get there, okay? Good, now let's play. And remember, before you play right now, I want you to imagine the one note that we talked before that it may sound a little bit different. And I'm not telling you which one, March. I know which one. <laughs> I know, I know you do. So we are gonna do, we're gonna apply what we were talking about before, okay? Let's do it once more from there. You can play now. It's getting there. It was beautiful. Uh, March, I have a question for you. Would you like, are you breathing between the sixth bar and seventh bar? Yeah, I am. I uh, you are. Okay. Let's practice that breath because, you know, something that everybody struggles, it's breathing in context. When you have to breathe in context, something happens musically. So I want your breath to be one musical note of the phrase, one more note of the phrase. The breath is part of the music. So if you see how I'm doing this, I'm gonna sing it for you. You see how I did it? Can yeah. we now blow with musical air and do that beautiful uh, breath together? One, two, three. Yes. So make that breath part of the music, not that interrupts music. Breaths okay. can be so musical. Breaths can make the music so good. Only that sometimes we imagine that breathing is because we don't have enough air and we're interrupting the music and that's wrong. Even string players or, or piano players, they, they, they breathe. Okay, now let's play and do that beautiful breath. that i love that next time when you practice this at home you just do it a little bit quicker but that gesture it was so beautiful so beautiful march i wanted to, to work even longer with you it goes fa fast <laughs> like so quick right this but, is a wonderful opportunity for me thank you so much but you know i can i can 
feel the love of music that you have to music uh, as you play because it's so musical just keep doing what we what, what you're doing march it's so great to 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 meet you to talk about music and clarinets with you today and stay well okay thank you so much you're You're welcome wonderful thank you thank you okay you're gonna stop the share screen share michelle all right so i want to introduce you to sabrina tempesta and she's got a video recording for us Uh, this is the rose etude number seven from the 32 etudes So hopefully if I'm sharing this correctly, you'll see both her and her music here. Sabrina, beautiful. Hi. How are you? How are you today? Okay, great. Beautiful nice video. Beautiful playing. Where are you? Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in New Jersey. Oh my God, New Jersey. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know each other? Do you know March? Mm, no. 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 So like, that's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Beautiful. I love your tone, uh, and I love. Uh, your support that you're having with the with the clarinet, I think is 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 fantastic. I wanna I'm gonna share the screen as well with you. So what I'm gonna do? I was really um, sad. All my dynamics are gone. <laughs> I know, I know. This is Zoom, right? Zoom 
it's amazing because it brings us together and we can do things like today. It's not perfect, but we just need to see the positive aspects, right? Yes, I know that you were doing the dynamics. I felt you were doing the dynamics. <laughs> and I felt you were trying to have a beautiful kind of bouncing quality when you were playing this, this etude, which I love that, okay? So let me share the screen. Bachan, ready to go. And ready to go. All right, so this is something I, I want you to think about. Okay. Instead of thinking of a six, eight, I, th I like thinking about this phrase, broader and larger. So what I do in my, in my score is that I, I do like one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and then again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, da, da, da. So I feel it like in a kind of a four, four bar. And it helps me so much to phrase this much better. And where I could feel you were doing in two because constantly you were bouncing, but you were always bouncing in the same way. So the, the phrase was more like of a one beat to a second beat instead of feeling like three beats with the with the with the with the phrase. So, uh, one of the things we I would like you to think right now. Uh -huh. uh, imagine you are conducting, or you're doing a shape with your hand, and you're doing. You go to the G natural, and then D sharp, and then the E is a little bit more suspended. You see how I'm singing this? What I'm uh -huh. doing? This is so important with rows because, you know, serial rows, uh, this was the beginning of uh, studying musicality at the conservatoire. During that time, before they were just worried about the technique, but then Cyril Rose came in with those studies and all of a sudden he was talking about style and he was talking about musicality that everybody should be doing. And this is kind of the origin of the North American school of clarinet player playing through, through Rose, like Professor Mimart, uh, Daniel Bonat, like all, all this. It's, it's beautiful when we look at those roots and a lot has to do with this kind of, of, of music. So I really like thinking about that style. So I'm not gonna talk more. I would like you to play. And just start okay. playing, thinking four instead of two. Okay. And do just the, fair, the first two phrases. The first one, two, three, four bars, sorry. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Okay. The the next thing, Sabrina, is mm -hmm. that I I can feel that you are breathing. Your tongue is hitting the reed, uh -huh. and then you're blowing. So okay. I feel this kind of pack. I'm exaggerating, but that's what I hear. Uh huh. Let's try doing something different. Let's try to place the tongue on the reed as you breathe, and in the same moment that you start blowing. Just bring your tongue down slightly and softly from the root, like, uh, uh, you know? So take it off bef or, or rather put my tongue on the, the, the while I'm breathing? 
Yes, uh -huh. tongue is going to be already on the reed as you breathe. Uh -huh. And as soon as you start blowing, take it off. In a synchronous okay. way. Can you try that? Okay. Do only so just that first note? Just the no, first note, E. <laughs> You can coordinate it even better. And that's, that's better. So right now I'm just hearing the shh, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not hearing the, the, the tongue hitting the reed and that's good. That's a, already a big improvement. And now we just need to make sure that you wanna get pure sound, not the this kind of effect. So can you play an E natural and play it mezzo forte and do a diminuendo to pianissimo and stay on pianissimo. Good, and now breathe, tongue on the reed and start piano. That's it. I love that. I love that. Because that's a, that's a problem that I see very often, is that we want to do two, and then uh -huh. it's never right. So okay. like one exercise you can do, Sabrina, not only you, Sabrina, everybody else that, that, that uh, is having a similar problem, is just to take a breath, tongue is there, and you like, And do it like 10, 20 times. And then you can do it in different dynamics as well. Okay? Let's do it five times. Yes, it is very important, Sabrina, that you mm -hmm. stop the sounds and start again. Don't connect the notes. Oh, okay. With the tongue and start again. Yes, little by little, you're getting more control over what you are doing, okay? And then you can do that with different notes, different registers, and different dynamics, and then you get that control of doing that. But that's, okay. that's extremely important, okay? Now, let's start once more, that's the, those one, two, three, four bars at the very beginning. That was beautiful. I like the very beginning, much better than you were doing before. And if, if you analyze, Sabrina, every time you breathe and what you do with your tongue after and you apply this, everything is gonna go much better. Okay. Every time you breathe, like you're doing that with the, with the, with the, with the tongue. Okay, the other thing. Uh, can you play that B natural to F sharp on the second uh -huh. bar? Going to the third bar, B, F sharp. Uh, I'm sorry, breathe there? If what? you can play the B natural to F sharp. To the F sharp, okay. Good, so I, I would like a little bit more legato there. Okay. That was beautiful, that was a beautiful legato. So legato is gonna affect your sound. Do that once more. I love that. Okay, let's do the whole phrase and think about that. That, that that legato it was more more it was a bit more refined the way you were playing that okay. right yeah 
To me, the phrase is always about the last eighth note of each bar going to the downbeat. So. What you do with those notes? Up, down, up, down, 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 down. So those ones could be musical. You see what I'm doing? How I'm shaping those ones that they're not always sounding the same? It may be a little bit of an emphasis on the 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 weak to the like yes. the D yes. sharp D, yes. D. Oh, okay. So how how do you how do you come up with that? I mean, I don't know. How does that? How do you come up with a with a like concept? like like what what? Uh, yeah, that concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's by I regroup notes and I make the important. I decide which important notes are in each phrase to. Oh. Music are gestures, right? Uh -huh. it's understanding the gestures. It's also a six eight. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, three, one. It's like waves where music is not always like. That's the fun of playing this and thinking about that. The funny part okay. is that it looks like this is advanced. I'm talking advanced, like, but as soon as you start applying that, you will start something better and something more natural. That's the truth. Uh -huh. okay? It's just it's just like music first, and then work with the technique to make that music work even better. Okay. All right. Let's do once more from the very beginning. That was very beautiful. Maybe you could do a little bit more crescendo here. So you create a little bit of tension and then relax a little bit. Okay, let's do it once more. I'm, I love talking about this. I could spend hours and hours. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sabrina, now you're not doing the right thing. Now the tongue is like out of control. Oh, oh, oh yeah, the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So much to keep track of. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And then when you go back to without an accent on the DE. So when I when you practice this. Practice blowing the clarinet without any any sounds, and get this kind of smooth uh, breath going through the clarinet. And then we, you can do a little bit of what March was doing also in the other class. Just let your body relax a little bit more as you're doing that without sound. Yeah.
that's it. And now we're going to play it, and that's it. Beautiful, beautiful, bravo, bravo. I love that. You know, we took this class with four bars, but this is about quality of what we are doing and understanding a concept that now you can go home and start thinking about that. But you're playing beautifully, Absolutely. Sabrina. Beautiful. Thanks. Yeah, Beautiful. no, it's great stuff to apply and think about. It's so much to keep track of. <laughs> I, I know. But I know. it gets, gets easier and easier the more we do it. So thank you. Yeah, we are clarinet lovers here. And I'm just sharing with you my, my love to, to clarinet. That's why I'm saying I could be hours and hours talking about <laughs> this. <laughs> thank you so much. And stay thank well. You. That is so great. Jose, this is gold. You're, you're giving us all great ideas here. I just love it. I want to introduce you to our next player, which is uh, Diane Hargreave. She's playing the Copeland Concerto. Now, Diane's video is about eight minutes, so um, it may be that we, I'll, I'll leave that up to Diane, to you and Jose. You might want to cut it shorter so you have more time to work, but I'll go mm -hmm. ahead and put it up and uh, we'll give it a listen.
Such beautiful, beautiful playing. I, I don't see you now here. Are you? Um, it sounds pretty grainy on the recording. I, know. I know, I know, but I can tell you're playing beautifully. Diane, where, where are you coming from? Georgia. I live in Georgia, Roswell, Georgia, near Georgia. Atlanta. That's great. That's fantastic. Well, you, you're having a wonderful control of this difficult concerto and beautiful concerto. It's one of my favorite concertos. And uh, so I'm going to, as I'm doing with everybody, I'm going to share the screen because I want to gonna show you something. So the introduction, Diane, try to play it like this is a song, like you're singing a song, like a kind of a dreamy song without bars on it. Just you're kind of wandering somewhere and singing this beautiful song. I want to show you something else. Look at this. I want you to pay attention to This is Copland's manuscripts. Okay. Those are the sketches of Copland. They are the Library of Congress. You can access now them in online, but I actually went there and I spent half a day with all the manuscripts, taking all the photos and and all the so when he started writing the piece, he wrote pas de deux, like the ballet, pas de deux. And look at this. Six eight. Instead of a 3-4 at wow. the very beginning, he was right. writing this in 3-8. So when I see this, it was kind of more, it has more continuity, right? When he was doing that. Right. then. After after a while, he he decided to to go back. He he rewrote the whole thing on a three four. Mm. But my goal is to play this in a three four that feels like a six eight. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm. But not two, three, one, three. We want to avoid that. Right. This is like a dreamy, slow waltz song that you are singing, very nostalgic. So, can you start playing uh, the piece? fast okay so a little bit slower and the other thing you can do Diane is make sure all the notes are beautifully sustained and no notes are sounding louder than others goosebumps that was beautiful Diane beautiful okay now you need to make sure that when you're breathing that breath there or that connection between the B and the F sharp you are a little bit afraid of and if you're breathing there make that breathing be part of the music 
ドレリミラ You see how I'm conducting that very end?、Right. Do, re, di, mi, ra. I'm doing this gesture as I'm breathing. Right, so I don't really need to decrescendo on the B. I could really carry forward through the next p r e s u r e Use your breaths as connecting elements that、right. can be expressive, not as disconnecting elements. Once more from the beginning. You didn't breathe there, and now it's a tiny bit too fast, right? Okay. Boom, draw, boom, two, Beautiful. All right. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is、uh, clear my drawings and I'm going to draw again. It's here. Oops. I'm doing something wrong. Now. Here. That note here. Right. This note here. This note here. Okay. I think Copland, when he wrote that, is not a tenuto mark. This is more of an expressive mark. He wants you to bring out those notes. Do, re, re. Sing. I remember when I was younger, I wanted to play that E as soft as possible. I'd be a champion playing that E as soft as possible. And I think the music is going up. And wants to sing even more, right? So, those t i n u t o marks play those notes even more expressive. And don't be afraid, don't be too soft there. Okay. Open more the sound. Okay, what's more from the beginning? Getting better, then don't do too much diminuendo here. Have a beautiful, warm A natural, and then breathe. And sing and have a, a, a little bit louder. Don't play that soft. It. I like your experimenting right now. We don't have it right yet, but、right. you're experimenting now. So now try to do the same without forcing the sound too much. So you're like, just go here, Diane, start here. You don't have to do a big crescendo, it's just that I don't want you to die too soon. Right. That's much better. That connection E to E was my much better. 
if you have a little bit more sound before as you did now mm -hmm. it's going to help you have more tone and connect that octave right. if your sound sound is too thin and too soft and without enough support that octave is going to be uh, not octave like that that interval it's going to be harder to go and it's not going to be expressive so that's very important when you go to e to d natural have you done a little bit of this half hole yeah well sometimes i do and sometimes i don't let's see i like that i like that okay so do a little bit of that on on that uh, g sharp the other thing the a natural needs to connect don't die there because then you can do a diminuendo after, but not on the A natural. Right. Go from E, D, C sharp. thing I also do when I play this with orchestras and I'm standing up again I'm using my body to be expressive but a little bit loose in the moment that I'm a little bit like this right. it gets into my sound and right. they cannot do anything about that so when when you practice this piece make sure that that you are relaxed and you're not like because this is soft and has a lot of intervals that they are difficult. That's important. Psychologically, it's very important. It's gonna give you more confidence right. when, when, when you're playing. But you're playing this so beautifully. Can you play at 24? Oh, Try to be have a different energy. This is mezzo forte from the piano, right. so you can be more expressive. beginning is more nostalgic more dreamy this it's a little bit more expressive so okay. a little bit more uh, air speed when you're playing this so what about getting down to where the poco writ is the c sharp crescendo so i don't want to get too loud so no. i don't get too loud you're, getting into the c sharp you are right you're right that crescendo is not much as about a crescendo it's about tension, musical tension. Okay. A lot of the dynamic changes with the composers are not actually crescendos or diminuendos. It's about I'm creating a musical tension at the end. Right. Intensity of the sound. Yes. And not that the mass the dynamic. And that's so important. Right. Okay, and then if you feel that at 24 you're playing too loud, you can play less but more intensity of the sound. You know what I mean? Yes. But make sure that the sound is not like 
Solitor. Because that's more like the beginning. Would you like to do once once more? You played so beautifully, Diane. was taking me to that point that you created more tension with, with the with the sound so when when you play all those phrases try to show those tensions where they go with the, with the with the with the sound you know the intensity of the sound that you define it like i love how you define it the intensity of the sound i think right. i'm gonna write it i'm gonna write it down and remember that that definition because that's so important because I, I sit very often with, with students as well. They do crescendos, going louder, and it sounds louder, but it sounds empty. You know what I mean? Yep. And it sounds a forte, but it sounds empty. A forte has some quality here, right? Or something that we are doing with that, that, that intensity of the sound, and that's magical. And you can do a lot of that here in Copland. Very good, very good. Can you play a little bit more? Okay. Keep going. Good. Diane, this is a quiz question for you. What happens with the orchestra when you're playing F E? I think it's the I think the harp's playing there. Yes. Bum bum. There. I think it's a plucking the a plucking on beat three. Yes, or, but something else is happening where the first violins, they have a counter melody with you. You're okay. doing. So every time you're playing a, a dotted half note, the, the violin players, the violins, first violins, they're doing something melodic over there. And it becomes a conversation between the first, the solo clarinet and the strings. And when that comes with the orchestra, it, it makes, me, makes me want to cry all the time because it's so genuine and so beautiful. So I think it's very important for you to listen to the recordings and pay attention what the strings are doing and visualize that all of a sudden now you're talking with the with the first violins when right. you're playing this. And you should get goosebumps all over your body when you're playing this. And I know you you you're this kind of player that you will do that because that's this kind of moment. Those are the musical gifts that they have been given to us by these amazing composers. Right. So play that. So don't necessarily play this the same way you play the opening because it's yes. different. Someone is playing on those right. notes. But it's so the notes that are very important are the pickups. And I give a little bit of space on the on the tenuto note so mm -hmm. the violins like come come up a little bit and then I continue with my music oh. and then I give them a little bit of space without dying too much. Right. Yes. But now sounds like a race car, like it's too much. <laughs> it's subtle. With music is a subtle thing. That you're trying to do something is not there yet and i tell you why 
because you don't have the sound of the first violins yet. In that That's house. right. I bet you, because you have a beautiful musical instinct, I bet you that after this masterclass is over, you're going to play that concerto. You got it. You're going to listen to it, and you're going to be like, yeah, now I know what to do. So don't worry about that right right now, because okay. I think I think that, that you just need to listen to that, and you will know right away what to do. I'm just pointing out this the, this aspect. But this concerto, Michelle, I know we have to finish right now, uh, is so human. This beginning is so human. Right. Has so many ranges, like the range of emotions. It's so wide. It's it's incredible. You can dig and find new sounds that take you somewhere here. Right. And use the instrument to get here, to get to your soul. Wow, beautiful. Thank you very okay. much. I really appreciate it. Diane, Fantastic. we we need more people like you, like three of you. I'm so glad to share this time with all of you. Thank you, thank you. Well, I feel like if we were in person, there would be big rounds of applause for mm -hmm. all of our players and Jose for you. So Marge, Sabrina, Diane, thank you so much for playing for this event. And uh, we're thrilled as part of the ICA Clarinet Enthusiast Community Committee to have uh, Jose, to have you here. Your, your thoughts and your music is wonderful, Jose. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle.